of you wonderful scuba divers, today we're talking about scuba diving in one of the most unique places in the world, the Galapagos Islands. And today's sponsor can take you diving there. So Explorer Adventures Fleet has a pair of liverboards. One of them has just been renovated, so it's all fancy and shiny and new. Uh, but I'll talk more about Explorer Adventures later on. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down some considerations about scuba diving in the Galapagos, some of the dive sites that are definitely worth visiting or not missing out on, what you can expect to see, the best times to visit, and the different itineraries that are available. The Galapagos Islands are a world-renowned destination for scuba diving, and with good reason. The Galapagos Islands are located a thousand kilometers from continental Ecuador, and they're on the confluence of three ocean currents with ongoing seismic and volcanic activity. So the isolation, the nutrient-rich lands, and the waters as well, combined with the shelter that the islands offer, mean that you're going to be seeing things here that you literally won't be seeing anywhere else in the world from small little macro critters to huge pelagic species and shoals of hundreds or even thousands of sharks. The islands offer a wide variety of dive sites from shallow reefs to deep water canyons and the marine life is incredibly diverse. Visitors can expect to see anything from sea turtles and sharks to penguins and dolphins, iguanas, the rather unique mola mola, sometimes all on the same dive because it's just so packed down there. Because of the isolation, there are plenty of endemic species that you will only find around the Galapagos, not just fish and reptiles, but birds and mammals also. The water temperature varies depending on the season. In the rainy season, which is like your December to May, the water temperature is typically between 65 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on which area you're diving in. Of course, it varies, and because it's lots of little islands, some of the way out islands can have different water temperatures. In the dry season, which is June to November, the water temperature can drop down to 60, 65 degrees Fahrenheit in the Western Islands, but it stays in like your mid 70s in Darwin and Wolf. So we're talking five mil wetsuit, hood, gloves as a minimum in the warmer months, but most divers will be more comfortable in a 7mm or even a dry suit in the colder months. The best time to visit the Galapagos for scuba diving in general is during the dry season, which runs from June to November. During this time, the weather is sunny, but the currents can be a bit stronger. We're always trading off here. However, the water is still quite cold as well. The dry season is the best time to find your whale sharks, but you still need to be lucky. They're never a guarantee, obviously. Hammerheads can be seen schooling most months of the year and they go deeper in the warmer months. Because of the location and the layouts of the islands, water movement on dive sites ranges from nothing at all to the washing machine where you need to cling onto something to stay in place. Much of the diving at Darwin and Wolf involves clinging to lava rocks or hiding behind them to hide from the currents and just watch everything go past. If you are planning a scuba diving trip to the Galapagos, there are a few things that you should keep in mind. First, you will need to be quite an experienced diver. The currents in Galapagos can be very strong and the water can suddenly just become cold during the dive. So you do need to be confident and capable in all of your scuba diving and diving in thicker wetsuits as well. Second, you'll need to be in good physical condition. Scuba diving in the Galapagos can be quite strenuous, but rewarding. You're going to see some incredible things just once in a lifetime diving. And most of the diving will be from a smaller panga boat as well to kind of zip you into dive sites and then collect you after the dive. So you need to be able to manage that. Even so, if you plan to go on every single dive, it's not going to be a relaxing holiday. It is going to be an active holiday. Mm -hmm. 
Because of their remote location, planning a trip to dive the Galapagos Islands can feel a bit like a full-time job. And when you're there, you of course want to make the most of it, not just dive the same three or four nearby dive sites every day for a week. And that's where liverboards like Explorer Ventures can be a real lifesaver. Instead of planning places to stay and then the transfers between them and then actually getting to them, the boat, the liverboard that you're living on transports you to a range of dive sites and you feel a bit less like a nomad just living out of your suitcase. As far as dive sites, Galapagos Islands has a huge variety and some of the best dive sites are only accessible by liverboard because they're just so remote. The day boats just can't physically get you there. So no, liverboards is the best way to get to, or the only way to get to a lot of dive sites. The two most popular are Darwin and Wolf. These are the remote ones. Darwin Island is home to some of the best diving in the Galapagos and widely considered a global diving top 10 dive site. It's one of the smaller islands. That's a good like 100 kilometers away from the larger islands, which is why a liverboard is better to kind of let you really appreciate and take your time there. The waters around Darwin are teeming with marine life, including sharks, turtles, rays, and some more exotic species. Wolf Island is another great diving spot, and it's not that far from Darwin. The waters around the island are home to a variety of sharks, including your hammerheads, your Galapagos sharks, and some silkies. But there are plenty of dive sites around the islands with lots of different things to see, both in the water and on the islands. Just walking around the islands, you'll experience exotic landscapes and endemic species. It's usually included in a good trip itinerary where you can choose to spend a bit of time on these islands instead of just on the liverboat. Bear in mind that many of them are completely uninhabited by people, these islands. Some of the islands are actually active volcanoes and the whole area is covered by a 133,000 square kilometer protected area. So there are strict rules set by Galapagos National Parks uh, about what you can and cannot do as well as when and where you can do or do not those things. Humboldt Explorer, uh, one of the Explorer Ventures fleet, is one of the only liverboard vessels allowed by Galapagos National Park to spend four days diving at Darwin and Wolf Islands. Uh, so this is a seven night, eight day route. It visits multiple islands with a special focus on seeing the big pelagic species, the big, big, uh, it's like hammerheads, your mantas, whale sharks at Darwin and Wolf. It's coins the uh, the Pelagic's itinerary because that's what they're really looking for. Whereas Tiburon Explorer, uh, one of the other vessels in the fleet, uh, they do an eight day, seven night itinerary and that spends three days with your Pelagic's at Darwin and Wolf and then heads to Cabo Douglas and Punta Vincente uh, for opportunities to see marine iguanas only found in the Galapagos and chances to see, of course, the elusive Mola Mola. Both of these vessel itineraries include land tours to explore North Seymour and Santa Cruz Islands to see giant tortoises, those uh, blue-footed booby birds, and the frigate birds. So whilst we're talking about these Galapagos liverboards, uh, I have to mention Humboldt Explorer, which has just been newly remodeled and is back cruising around the Galapagos Islands with very comfortable and beautiful living spaces. It's been upgraded from top to bottom, including a refurbished salon, a new sun deck bar and lounge, uh, modernized staterooms and custom designed seats uh, added onto the bow so guests can enjoy Galapagos' unique landscape. The dive deck received some, some of the biggest changes. It was raised to a single level to allow for easier movement of divers and a new charging station was installed. So everything is fresh and clean and upgraded to the highest safety standards. Each cabin was basically stripped down to the bulkhead and then rebuilt back up. So Humboldt Explorer is practically brand new and is an extremely enjoyable liveaboard to cruise the Galapagos Islands on. Her sister ship, 
In the Galapagos is Tiburon Explorer, which is a newer vessel. Tiburon Explorer is the first launched in 2020 and is one of Galapagos' most luxury liverboards. It also has a modern fire suppression system, state-of-the-art battery charging system for your electronics, emergency escapes. Both of these vessels are really built for divers enjoyment and safety is paramount. To get you to those really hard to reach dive spots in the most up-to-date, safe and relaxing dive boats as possible. As with the rest of the Explorer Ventures fleet, Humboldt and Tiburon Explorer adhere to the dive green environmental management policy. So this program identifies the potential environmental impacts of the vessels in order to develop and improve strategies that help measure, adjust and ultimately minimize their footprint in the area. This policy helps to ensure the long-term sustainability of coral reefs, ecosystems, and of course the recreational scuba diving industry, as well as local livelihoods. Explorer Ventures, they worked with Reef World to develop the Green Fins standard that you've probably heard of for a proven conservation management approach which standardizes environmental guidelines for the global marine tourism industry. The initiative implements a best practices code of conduct for dive professionals uh, the operators, the NGOs, and federal governments as well. And Greenfins offers the world's first independent certification, encouraging businesses to evaluate and improve their practices. And in 2022, Greenfins launched an online hub which expands access and the standardized guidelines to businesses in remote locations like the Galapagos Islands. And yeah, you'll probably start to see this on more and more dive sites and diving contractors around the world this little green fin accreditation and yeah explorer ventures helped to create that first of all be humble in your skills the water conditions can be challenging to say the least and conditions can just change on the dive Good visibility and warm waters can quickly change to cold water and poor visibility and water movement can be quite rough at times in the water and actually on the boat. If you don't have a lot of liverboard experience or diving in challenging conditions, then you won't have much fun. If you really do want to go to the Galapagos, like so many divers do, build up your experience first and make sure that you're confident in the water and around liverboards in general. Make sure that you stay with your guide as well and don't swim off. The currents can change unexpectedly and change quickly and the dive sites are quite far offshore as well so it's very easy to get separated so stay nice and close to your buddies and stay nice and close to the guide. You also want to be confident with your equipment setup if you can, bring your own equipment that's designed for diving in cold waters and make sure that it's checked beforehand and tested. You don't want it to have come straight off from a service and straight out to the Galapagos. You want to take it for a dive or two just to make sure it's all in working order. The last thing that you want is for like a clip on your BCD to break mid-dive or a regulator malfunction in high current. So check over your dive equipment really well and in advance of your trip just to make sure you if you need to get any repairs or servicing or any replacement parts thermoclines are common and humboldt current brings cold water up from the antarctic so be prepared for cold water seven mil wetsuit is a realistic choice in the colder months and you may even want some layers underneath that hoods and gloves also hoods to keep your head warm and gloves because yeah you're probably going to be holding on to some of the rock formations if the current picks up there isn't a huge amount of coral to worry about and a lot of galapagos is volcanic rock so yeah you're going to want gloves to stop from scratching and damaging your hands and choose your time of year carefully some species whilst of course never guaranteed can only be found at certain times of the year and yeah the popular times of the year get booked up really quickly so be prepared to be booking a year at least in advance if you want to experience diving and visit one of the most unique places on earth then galapagos islands really does need to be on your bucket list and 
If you want to make sure that you're going to be making the most of your visit, then first head over to exploreadventures.com. They have the top liverboards in, uh, in Galapagos and they know everything there is to know about diving there. I've spent a lot of time uh, just consulting them about information in this video. They can help you plan your big dive trip and you can take a better look at their two popular liverboards in the area. I'm going to put links down in the description below as well as up here. You'll see a little eye card popping up from time to time throughout the video. Uh, if you click on that, then that will take you through to their website. Otherwise, head over to our website, scubadivermag.com, or of course, like, share, and subscribe here on YouTube. Definitely remember to subscribe to the Scuba Diver Magazine channel. Thank you for watching, everybody, and of course, safe diving.